heard the name many times, whether because of its iconic airport, in the context of its founder Lee Kuan Yew, or perhaps its vibrant food culture. This is Singapore, an island city-state located off the southern tip of Malaysia, with a population that has been thriving economically for years. It's situated at the end of the Malaysian Peninsula, just north of Indonesia. The geography here is quite straightforward. For instance, the country is separated from Malaysia to the north by the Straits of Johor, and from Indonesia to the south by the Singapore Strait. Singapore Island itself is linked to Malaysia via two bridges across the Straits of Johor. The mainland of Singapore comprises the area between the Singapore River and Bukit Timah. Other islands part of Singapore include Pulau Ubin and Sentosa. Over 30% of Singapore's total land area is covered by tropical rainforest. This country has a total land area of 725.7 square kilometers. At its greatest extent, Singapore spans about 42 kilometers east to west and 23 kilometers north to south. It's worth noting that despite the presence of highlands, much of Singapore is relatively flat and low-lying, with its highest point only 166 m at Bukit Timah. It has over 195 kilometers of coastline along the south and east. Located near the equator, Singapore has a typical equatorial climate that's hot and humid year-round with abundant rainfall. For instance, temperatures average 31 degrees C, while annual rainfall reaches over 2,300 millimeters. This level of rainfall would be considered extreme and could lead to significant flooding and other related issues. However, this is not the case in Singapore as the rivers flow well. For example, the Singapore River, fondly called the River, flows through the center of the island into the bay. This river stretches 3.2 kilometers from the sea to its upper reaches at Kim Seng Road. Together with the Kalang, Wampoa, Rochor, and Geylang rivers, the Singapore River is part of the Kalang Basin. This basin constitutes nearly one-third of Singapore's drainage catchment. Interestingly, in the 1820s, Singapore River became the artery of trade and commerce for the British, and this remained so for many decades. This country not only takes pride in its river, but also its resources. Natural resources in Singapore are limited to some granite and garnet. Although Singapore has limited natural resources on its land, lacking considerable mineral deposits or energy sources, its strategic location spurred its growth from fishing village to modern metropolis. While lacking in natural resources, its deep natural harbor and position along key naval routes propelled development as a trading port under British rule. Today, the nation boasts the world's busiest port in terms of shipping tonnage, driving its export economy and connecting over 130,000 vessels annually to 600 other ports globally. Yet economic prosperity was not instant. Earlier generations faced high unemployment, poverty and instability after independence before visionary leader Lee Kuan Yew implemented pragmatic reforms to uplift living standards across all levels of society. His foresight to combat corruption and invest in infrastructure, education and public housing helped the nation progress from third world conditions to the first world within a generation. Now the Republic houses a flourishing middle class and offers its citizens one of the highest qualities of life globally. But under rapid development, tensions sometimes ripple between heritage conservation, sustainable urban planning and the relentless pace of change. As the city-state plans for a future focused on innovation and self-sufficiency, preserving ecosystems and community bonds remain vital to Singaporeans' way of life. Singapore today dazzles visitors as one of the safest, greenest and most tech-savvy cities in Asia. But not long ago, it was better known in the West as an authoritarian state, with stringent laws banning things like the manufacturing, importing and selling of chewing gum, which took effect from the 3rd of January, 1992. At first, the government felt like banning chewing gum outrightly would be tough on the citizens. So in 1980, they started with the ban of the advertisement of chewing gum. Although chewing gum in Singapore is not illegal, it is against the Singapore law to import and sell it. This perception stemmed partly from visionary leader Lee Kuan Yew, the nation's first prime minister who implemented tough policies to combat corruption and molded the city-state into a prosperous hub. Over time, while retaining low crime rates and elite standards, Singapore has softened its image through arts development, lively events like Formula One night races, and embracing creative expression from public graffiti walls to homegrown indie films. 
Neighborhoods like Tiong Baru have transformed from aging to avant-garde with vibrant street art, hipster cafes, and youthful energy. Areas like Orchard Road glimmer with luxury shopping malls drawing tourists from around the world. Massive new resorts and attractions on Sentosa Island and Marina Bay have also boosted Singapore into a global vacation destination. Yet rising costs of living and rapid changes have brought growing pains for locals struggling to adjust. As the nation plans future development guided by its 2030 Green Plan, balancing economic gains, sustainability and quality of life for all remains key to Singapore's continued success. Through the decades, Singapore fondly called Lion City has shown remarkable adaptability and determination to exceed expectations the world placed upon it. This ever-changing dynamo continues to define its own remarkable destiny. Singapore has a super fancy economy where businesses and people starting their own stuff are really welcome. They use Singapore dollars for money. On average, folks make around 4,680 Singapore dollars each month. But if you're a cleaner or laborer, the least you can get is 1,300 Singapore dollars per month. Families usually bring in about 9,293 Singapore dollars monthly. If you want to live in the city center in a one-bedroom place, it'll cost you around 2,500 Singapore dollars a month. If you're thinking of getting a home, the cheapest public housing starts at 130,000 Singapore dollars. Eating at hawker centers is cool because meals there are around three to six Singapore dollars. Singapore is like a money powerhouse with a super high per person money making thing. GDP of over 85,000 US dollars, according to the World Bank. Not many people are without jobs, with only about 2 to 4% not working. The big industries there are making electronics, doing money stuff, dealing with oil, having tourists, working on medical science and moving things around. The airport in Singapore connects to 400 cities all over the world. The government is really into people starting their own businesses, with low taxes for companies and cool programs like Smart Nation Innovations that cheer on tech startups. Some local companies you might have heard of are Razor, the gaming company, and Grab, the ride service. Taxes in Singapore help pay for good things like cheap rides, healthcare, schools, and homes for regular folks. But things brought into the country, like stuff or cars, have higher taxes, making the cost of living a bit high. One major reason Singapore attracts expats and visitors is the strong Singapore dollar and relatively low taxes that make incomes stretch further. The average salary is around 4,680 Singapore dollars per month. And while Singapore does not have a general minimum wage, workers in the cleaning and security guard industry have a minimum wage which starts at 1,300 Singapore dollars. Even on a tight budget, the city-state offers an enviable quality of life. Hawker centers everywhere serve up hearty meals for just a few dollars. Locals flock to these open-air food courts for authentic Asian flavors from fragrant laksas, steaming in clay pots to the iconic Hainan chicken rice. Meals rarely cost more than eight Singapore dollars. Shopping malls also provide air-conditioned respite with global chains and local boutiques. Reliable public transport, like the smooth-running MRT subway system, makes car ownership unnecessary. Locals rely on the efficient network of trains and buses that crisscross the highly urbanized island. But taxis remain affordable options to avoid humid heat while exploring vibrant neighborhoods. Yet high importer taxes on vehicles contributes to a high cost of living alongside rising housing costs. While unemployment stays low, many Singaporeans voice concerns on managing family expenses and saving less discretionary income nowadays. Still, the government strives to keep food, goods, amenities, and recreation accessible across income levels. Vendors thrive at bustling markets like Chinatown and Kampong Glam, adding old world texture while diversifying economic opportunities. The social fabric matters here. As modernization propels this city forward rapidly, Singapore aims for prosperity shared by all segments of society. One of the top draws when relocating to Singapore is the ultra-low crime rate. Streets stay safe to explore day and night, with vigilant policing ensuring urban order. Locals freely indulge in the vibrant nightlife knowing temporary licenses allow events to carry on securely into the early morning. Singapore's art scene intermixes Malay, Chinese, Indian, and Western cultural influences into dynamic hybrid forms. For instance, the Esplanade Arts Center hosts world-class performances of dance, theater, and music from classical Indian song 
to avant-garde Chinese opera, reinventing Singapore's multi-layered identity. Outdoor events also unite communities through arts, like the annual Taipusam Festival, which spills into the streets with loud music, street food, and elaborate Kavadi body piercings offered in spiritual devotion. The iconic Merlion statue embodies Singapore's history, emerging from humble fishing village to modern metropolis. The National University of Singapore stewards Singapore's dedication to innovation and talent development across disciplines. Many global leaders and luminaries graduated from local universities focused on technology research and practical entrepreneurship education. Public transit, like the smooth-running MRT subway system, efficiently transports locals across the highly urbanized island. But Singapore also plans sustainable cycles of renewal, with older neighborhoods like Tiong Bahru regenerating through influxes of trendy shops and street art breathing modern life into aged buildings. Singapore also offers much beyond its efficient urban landscape, blending natural wonders with ingenious innovations that uplift the community. Lush nature reserves like the cloud forest and botanic gardens nurture rich biodiversity across this modern island. Locals find joy bonding over Tai Chi amidst serene gardens as vibrant birds circle through vertical foliage. Yet Singapore also pioneers sustainability solutions from its super tree grove generating solar power to hydronic networks, recycling rainwater in self-sufficient cycles. The Marina Barrage harnesses reservoir water systems through masterful engineering across reclaimed lands that augment limited natural resources. And Tampine's Eco Green Village sustains carbon-neutral solar homes for residents envisioning how communities may commune tomorrow. Kampong Glam's lively night market also lets adventurous souls sample exotic fruits and wares from woolly rambutans to fragrant trinkets suffusing heritage. While efficiently orchestrating a remarkable metropolis, Singapore instills higher purpose into people-centered policies. Subsidized public housing uplifts citizens while welcoming migrant workers. Harsh drug laws strive for order and rehabilitation over punishment. Meritocracy elevates talent over status. Such pragmatic ideals power Singapore far beyond a gleaming financial hub, towards an inclusive society seeking meaning and belonging within its spectacular feats of progress. Singapore is not just about its tall, modern buildings. It's also home to some secret gems on its many islands. Places like Sentosa and Lazarus Islands have cool resorts and exciting theme parks, like Universal Studios. If you're looking for a peaceful escape, Pulau Ubin is the spot, with its quiet forests and old villages where you might even spot hornbills flying over little houses without Wi-Fi or roads. Even on the main island of Singapore, there are hidden natural spots, like Bukit Timah, the highest hill covered in ancient jungle. This untouched rainforest is a home for animals like pangolins and macaques, reminding everyone that the busy city depends on a lively world hidden under the trees. The government is also working hard to keep a balance between growing the city quickly and protecting its history. They turned places like Tanjong Pagar into museums to show off local architecture. And Kampong Glam, an old Muslim area, still stands behind new tall buildings, with its pretty minarets telling stories of the different cultures that shaped Singapore. Despite all the modern gadgets and cool things in the city, Singaporeans also value their past. Nature escapes, old neighborhoods, and statues like the Merlion, a half-fish, half-lion creature, connect the present to the past, making Singapore special in its own way. Singapore is a country that's really good at both growing quickly and being smart about it. They've turned a place called Semakau Island into a special landfill that doesn't ruin the land. Instead, it uses dirt to make new land, and now it's a home for mangrove trees. This way, they don't mess up the small bit of land they have. Singapore is always trying new ideas like this to be ethical and clever with space. But there are still things they can do better for the environment and people. Most people in Singapore live in public housing, which means more than 80% of them do. These are like little towns by themselves, with schools and markets. It's good for building a strong community. But sometimes they have to knock down old places to make new ones for more people. Some people don't like this because it means losing important parts of their history. Luckily, there are groups of people who really care about saving these special places. For example, there's a village called Katib Bongsu that's one of the last old villages left. People have worked hard to bring it back to life after it was almost gone. 
This shows that even though the government has plans, regular people can do things to save the places that matter. Maybe, in the future, the government and the people can work together to keep the important parts of Singapore alive while making it even better. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.